going on, everybody? C4 here. Welcome back. This is take three. Too much swearing in the other ones. And I, I think I can be a little more professional so this video doesn't get demonetized. Maybe make a couple bucks off my utter misery here on New Year's Eve. The worst loss of the season for the Philadelphia Eagles is we fall 35-31 to, at one point, the three-win Cardinal team. Now they have four wins. And th that score's not even reflective of the game. Seven of Phillies 31 was a 99-yard pick six by Sidney Brown, the Canadian, which was awesome, right? But the reality was that was red zone. Like, that should have been seven points more on the Cardinals' side, less on ours. That was like a fluke play. On top of that, right, we got the ball. Arizona tried like a stupid onside kick, like a Dan Campbell-esque decision. We started final drive midfield, got a holding penalty, and then we had three of the worst play calls you'll ever see. Three play calls offensively that reflect everything that's been wrong with this Eagles offense this season. We settle for a field goal. We get the ball to Arizona. Bull their way down the field. It is what it is, man. We Like the Dallas Cowboys, we got exposed embarrassingly against the Cardinals. At least the Cowboys did it early in the season. We did it when the one seed was up for grabs still somehow in the NFC. When the two seed, especially after Dallas losing yesterday, or uh, Dallas winning and Detroit losing yesterday, was up for grabs. And just absolute failure. Absolute failure. The offense was better today. But when it mattered, everything that's wrong on the offense brought its head up. When this game mattered, to put it away. Defensively, be it Sean Desai, be it Matt Patricia, this was the worst defensive game of the season. And I am going to say a hot take thing. It's got to sound hot takey, but then when I explain it, has a little bit more logic behind it. So let me get to it. I think the Eagles should fire Nick Sirianni. I've seen enough this year to go, he's not the guy. And that sounds incredibly reactionary. Throwing him under the bus. We're in a losing skid. We got the talent there. We just went to the Super Bowl last year. ABC. We've already found out the offense, right? Nick Sirianni got the head coaching job here in Philadelphia because he was the offensive coordinator of the Colts. And then, very, very quickly into his tenure, here's the head coach and play caller of the Eagles, the offense that supposedly got him this head coaching job, he demoted himself to give it to Shane Steichen. And then we saw last year what was an amazing offense. We're like, holy, Shane Steichen, Nick Sirianni, let's go. We made the right hire. And then Shane Steichen goes on, gets a head coaching job for the Colts, a team that has half as much talent as the Eagles. And they would beat the Eagles by two scores right now. The Colts are going to go to the playoffs with Gardner Minshew. And Philadelphia has no identity on the offensive side of the ball, no consistency with the play calling. And has a team that, for as many things they've had to play for during this losing streak, has failed on every single opportunity. And that is a reflection of the head coach. Now, the reason why I think Nick Sirianni should be fired, and you could justify firing him, is like much like Bill Belichick, maybe not so much now, it's wearing a little thin, probably due to the quarterback spot, but for much of the success of the Patriots, Bill Belich it was Bill Belichick's team because he was the GM and the head coach. But he was the GM. That was Bill Belichick's team, right? For better or for worse, Dallas was Jerry Jones' team. Dallas felt like it didn't matter who that coach was. It was Jerry Jones' team, and you're the coach. That is what Philadelphia is. This is Howie Roseman's team. Howie Roseman, like a Madden rebuild. Last year we went to the Super Bowl. Howie Roseman had a 92 overall Madden team. He had this, this car, this 92 overall Eagles car. But last year, that car was like a driver's ed car. You know when you have the driver's ed car, you have the two steering wheels, two sets of brakes? You had Nick Sirianni in the driver's seat, right? And, you know, he's like, oh, my play calling kind of sucks. I'm kind of wobbly. I, I can't check my blind. I don't use my blinker, all that stuff. And luckily, in the instructor side, we had Shane Steichen last year for the offense. So it's just like, hey, hey, it's okay. Let's calm down. We know what this team's good at. We know what this team's bad at. Let's get Jalen Hurts going. RPOs, quick throws. Run the football, and when it's time, man, we can hit A.J. Brown deep. We can hit Devontae Smith down deep. We can call up a Dallas Goddard screen pass, bubble screen. That works, right? And it worked. This, Those two combined with a lot more than we all thought on Shane Steichen's plate, keeping that car on the road, was able to go to the Super Bowl, right? And you, you, Nick Sirianni brings value. Clearly a player's coach. Clearly, like, he's supposed to be the guy that gets these guys ready to go, motivated. Especially, he showed that immediately when he demoted himself and gave his offense to someone else last year when this offense was good. So, this year, we have him by himself. There's no instructor in the other seat. It is Brian fucking Johnson. 
And this this 90 team still has spinners, still got 20s, still got 220 subs, 212 inch subs in the back. Right? We got the backup camera pre-installed. It's an older car. We went aftermarket, got the backup camera in there. Remote start, right? Howie Roseman has this team ready to go, but in that driver's seat, Shane Steichen time and time again has been utterly missed. And Nick Sirianni, by himself in the steering wheel, has driven this team off a fucking cliff, week in, week out, down in the crunch time. This is a bad team, and if I look at it, not as much at the moment, this is an average team that has very good players. And sometimes that average team, those really good players, will step up and make some plays. I, you know, you can't say the Philadelphia Eagles are a fraudulent 11-5. and five. You know, the Steelers were like that. The Vikings were like that last year. A couple teams that have had good records. We're not really that good of a team. We have, like, good wins. Like, one thing you could say about this Eagles team that you can't say about this other. We have good wins. Beat the Dolphins. Beat the Dolphins impressively. Beat the Bills in overtime. That was the big game. Beat the Dallas Cowboys. Obviously, in those games, bounces went certain ways. But still, those are credible wins. Playoff caliber wins. We ran that gauntlet. This team was finding ways to win, which... Yeah, you'd love to see them blow at teams like they did last year. But I think a staple of a championship caliber football team is finding ways to win, win games you're not expected to win. Philly was doing that. But when push came to shove, especially against like these winnable games, these games that the other teams, like, you know, yeah, we find ways to win, maybe win ugly against other playoff teams. That's the, the nature of the NFL, especially with the changes we had, losing both offensive and defensive coordinators. It's always going to be tough. But we got talent. And there's no way there's that big of a drop-off from last year's team to this year's team. But this team, under Nick Sirianni, the, the talent, there's, it's, it's either, it's, it's, it's either, it's on the coaching staff, or somehow, some way, this entire fucking team has regressed at the same time. Jalen Hurts is not playing like a $200 million quarterback. He's not seen the game like a $200 million quarterback. The decision to constantly have DeAndre Swift come out of the game. The decision to have like the most difficult offense. And it's been talked about in the media presses, Sirianni, in all these press conferences. Like, why is the Eagles offense so difficult? Why does it seem like everything is like pulling teeth here? Why are we always taking the shot play? Why do we always say we need to get more in the shot play? Easy throws. Last year was all RPOs. Easy throws. No, no, we just got to... Fucking have Jalen Hurts bail out of clean pockets and try to throw it downfield to A.J. Brown. If not, we'll just scramble out of bounds and fucking punt it. Like, it is absolutely a coaching issue at this point. Or everyone regrets at the same time. What is the higher probability? And the fact that this is Howie Roseman's team. And Nick Sirianni, who got the job for the offensive coordinator job, which he can't even do anymore. What is his, what is his job? What does he add? What value? Does he add to Howie Roseman's team? This team doesn't look prepared. It's sloppy. Hasn't looked any better weeks 17 than it did week one. When we're all like, oh, it's a little shaky, but we'll be fine. Still the same problems. Still the same lack of execution. A.J. Brown looks like every Philadelphia Eagle fan pissed off the offense. Right? Devontae Smith looks checked out. Don't blame him. Defense looks checked out. There's no juice on the defensive side of the ball. Bizarre decision to like just how do you not outright fire like that? You lose respect for your coach. First of all, the defense probably generally in that building pissed off that Sean Desai got fired. No one wants to see their coach get fired, but then not to have like the, just that like passive aggressive, like we're not gonna fire you, we're just gonna make you go to a different spot. We're gonna have Matt Patricia step up, but you're still gonna be here. Like that's a lack of balls, lack of decision making, and like that is an epitome of like everything that is currently wrong. With his Philadelphia Eagles. And my argument is this is Howie Roseman's team. Much like some of those other teams, Bill Belichick, Jerry Jones, th there are some teams that it is very much. You look at Shanahan in San Francisco, you look at McVay in LA, you look at you know Baltimore and what they're doing with Lamar Jackson this year. Like there's some coaches and schemes that that's what makes the team. That is the nucleus of what makes those teams successful. The nucleus of what makes Philadelphia successful is Howie Roseman and his team building. He just needs someone to steer the thing to the goddamn championship. And we don't have that right now. And that is Nick Sirianni's job, and he is failing it. He is very replaceable at, at the end. I guess nine minutes in. Nick Sirianni should be fired because this is Howie Roseman's team, and Nick Sirianni has not shown a single thing since we've lost Shane Steichen to show that he is not replaceable. Um, you know, looking at the greats, Jalen Hurts didn't play bad, also didn't play great, three touchdowns, one pick, 25 yards on the ground, not the reason why we lost this game, that the 
the final, like, as, as soon as we recovered the onside kick, that drive was terrible. I don't, you know, can't be sure if that's on Jalen Hurts, if that's on the play calling. I'm assuming it's the play calling because those were, it didn't look like, like busted plays. Two straight weird quarterback fucking runs. Um, you know, it's it's definitely not Jalen Hurts' fault. Plus, we just didn't have the ball. We This is 100% against on the defense because literally at one point, it was 30 minutes to 9 minutes in terms of times of possession between the Cardinals and the Philadelphia Eagles. You know, this offense isn't it. Maybe last year we could get by with that because the offense was efficient last year. Not this year. Absolutely can't. We need as many times as we can because this offense is zero signs of consistency this year. We just didn't have the amount of reps that uh, an offense as slow and prodding as ours uh, needs to really have to have an effective game. But it, it wasn't a bad game from Jalen Hurts. I, I, you know, I'd give him probably B+. Plus. The run game, DeAndre Swift had a lot of juice. A nice one hit a catch. Just far too much not using him. It's very frustrating. It's like Deuce Staley's back on this team again with the running back rotation. Can, you know, I get it, all right? If the argument is Kenny Gable's a better pass protector, that's why he's out there, fine. But some of these designed... Jalen Hurts, just fucking give it to Swift. Hurts, if it's his knee, if it's the money and he wants to protect himself, whatever it is, he is not athletic looking this season at all. He's made one-tenth of the athletic plays that he made last year. Fine. We fucking shave some of these off. Jalen Hurts only should be scrambling on broken plays and fucking sneaks. No more design because you're just taking away reps from DeAndre Smith who actually shows signs of juice. Who actually can make plays, can make guys miss the whole field. Jalen Hurts not doing that. You look at some of that that big touchdown that Jalen Hurts had a uh, year or two ago against the Saints, where he broke Buddy's ankles and opened. Like that's not the guy we have right now under center. He's probably due to the injury, which is fine. But make the fucking adjustment to run the ball. DeAndre Swift, our most explosive player with the ball in their hands right now. Brutal, man. DeAndre Swift gets an A. He was awesome today. Everyone up the play calling. The, like again, it's like the only thing that makes sense is Deuce Daly's there somehow. He found his way on the sideline after he got fired. <laughs> Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Receiving, I mean, just wasn't a whole lot of, like, you know, wasn't really missed plays. Uh, I felt like, look, A.J. Brown, four of five. Five targets, four catches. Dallas Goddard, five catches on six targets. Julio, two of two. Devontae had a chance at a play. But again, that play there would have been awesome. Maybe last year's team with the with the better chemistry, just maybe even earlier in the season where we got those breaks to go. It was a blitz. Jalen Hurts threw a little bit of a, you know, classic Jalen Hurts pass, you know, a little, uh, little underthrown. But it's a play that you see Devontae Smith make, right? But again, that was a blitz. Is that a, That's our fucking blitz, Peter? That is garbage. That is unex... Throw a fucking slant. I can call that. Why are we throwing... Like, all... You know, it's play... When, when they call the blitz, the all blitz, here's what we're going to do. We're going to have fucking Jalen Hurts throw off his back foot to the sideline to try to hit, like, a looping no-look over the shoulder to... Dev like, why is everything so complicated? Throw a fucking slant. You got Greg Dortch running slants. On third down, on the other side, we have Devontae Smith and A.J. Brown. We can't find a way to make it fucking easy. It's unbelievable. It's unfucking believable. Like, this fall from grace is 100% worthy of the overreaction of saying, like, you, the clean shot. Absolutely clean shot. Not a single fucking person. I don't care that Jalen Hurts is BFF with Brian Johnson. I love, came from Florida. I love Brian Johnson of Florida when he showed with a little bit of uh, Anthony Richardson. Should work. I don't care that he's eight fucking Jalen Hurts' butt buddy. Best friends going. You know, butt bodies. They're two peas in a pod. Carson Wentz was like that with, uh, with Press Taylor. That is the one comparison. People always say you can't compare Jalen Hurts. You can't compare all these guys with each other. Right? But they're being butt bodies. Right? I don't care that they're, they hang out all the time. I don't care that they're best friends. Okay? Don't care. Does it, they, it's clear, like, clearly, like, is there something there? Is, is this, is Brian Johnson saying what Jalen Hurts is doing is fine? Like, what Brian Johnson is, give Jalen Hurts, he's a $250 million quarterback, okay? He needs, it's, it's brutal, man. Absolutely brutal. Um, defense was terrible. Absolutely terrible. No pass rush. I will say the Cardinals offense, bad matchup for the Philadelphia Eagles defense, right? Pick on the linebackers, the RPOs, the runs. It was it was never going to be an easy game. You look at this at face value, you're like, please let this be that easy game, right? Please let it... Maybe it doesn't even have to be a make right, just make it easy. 21-0, we'll take that. 
this defense got absolutely owned. Sidney Brown, pick six. He can hold his head up high. Thought Reed Blankenship played pretty well. Thought Jalen Carter had a splash play. But, like, no pass rush, non-existent pass rush. What, we have one sack to Jalen Carter, and really it was just more of, like, Kyler Murray tripped, right? So the pass rush is non-existent. The secondary is still inexperienced, lack of athleticism, right? Eli Ricks got fucking wrecked. They target when you know you got to get a play. You target James Bradbury. Vontae Maddox, you know, what are we really expecting him coming back after injury? But embarrassing, absolutely embarrassing it is what it is, man. This team is, hey, you know, we'll play in January. If they somehow, some way hit that reset button and can and can figure it out, Sure, and we, you know, we got a chance. We're going to have a chance. But there is literally, this is like, after the Seahawks loss, pretty eye-opening, right? It's like, oh, man, we can't be Seattle. Like, I don't even think, why Why are we even hoping and cheering for, like, maybe we're for the two seed getting either path? We're not beating any playoff caliber team right now. This is like the needle of, like, ugh. Okay, well, we're going to get one extra loss in January at this point. But we got enough talent. There's enough talent there. That if they somehow find that secret sauce, stop having butt bodies between Jalen Hurts and the offense and Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni needs to coach like his job's on the line. That's that's what I need. I need to see that sense of urgency. I don't need to see him come to the press conference, say we got to do better. We got to self-scout. That's on me. Like, you need, you're going to lose your fuck. You should be on the hot seat right now. To look, Like, the same with Ron Rivera. The same with fucking the Falcons coach. The same with... Uh, you know, all these guys that are terrible, that are going to be fired, right? Bears coach, baby. Nick Sirianni needs you right there because you are you you have no redeeming qualities right now. You are adding nothing to this team, and you, Howie Roseman can just see like I still have this roster for another year. We need someone that can get something out of this team. I'll, if, if if it's not Sirianni, if you're not going to be able to maximize this fucking window that we have built, you're gone. That, that is my that is my way of thinking. I love to hear what you guys think. In the comment section below, and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. So, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year.